A lady refused to cut my hair based on my appearance. For context, I like to wear my clothes until they're worn out. I have money, but I don't really spend it unless I really want to or need to. Money usually goes towards my groceries, bills, etc. My clothes don't look torn apart, but you can tell they're old. I wear old pants, old shoes, old shirts, all clean, just well-worn. I decided to go to a salon for the first time just out of curiosity. I usually cut my own hair, but I wanted to try something new. I signed in, sat down, and waited. The lady, who I assumed was going to be the original person to cut my hair, takes a glance at me and turns around to one of her coworkers. Without even lowering her voice, tells her I'm not cutting her hair. I walked in with very clean hair. I was clean. My hair is kind of short, and it was all brushed out and good before I walked in. She continued telling me she didn't want to cut my hair because I was cheap and was thought she'd be lucky to get free stuff out here. I didn't know they did free things for newcomers anyway. I just wanted a haircut, you know? Well, her coworker cuts my hair instead. We have a nice talk, and I end up with a lovely haircut. She was one of the sweetest people I've ever met. On top of paying for my haircut, I look at her and tell her, Here, I want you to have this. This is yours. Don't give it to anyone else. And give her a $50 tip. The other woman saw all that and looked angry as hell. The lady who cut my hair thanked me, and she looked overjoyed. That was the best $50 I've ever spent. Seeing the first woman's angry expression made my whole year. I'm not so cheap after all, huh? Three years after becoming disabled, it's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Nearly three years to this day, as a 19-year-old, I was at my friend's birthday party when I smoked what I thought was weed. It wasn't, it was some synthetic plastic shit. I blacked out after a head spin, then I woke up a four-hour flight away in a hospital with no idea what's going on. Turns out I jumped off the fifth-story balcony. Snapped my left humerus, four vertebrae burst fractures that damaged my spinal cord, and a fractured pelvis. Over the next six months of rehab, it changed me. I went from being a 19-year-old that didn't think about others, to someone that can empathize and understand from other people's problems. All I want to do is help. I won't be able to walk again or go to the toilet normally, but in the last three years, I got engaged, got into our Wheelchair National Tennis Academy, and I'm about to start a business that helps young people with disabilities accept themselves. I'm proud of who I've become, and I wouldn't change anything. I psychologically tortured my roommate by throwing off how his brain responds to his alarm clock because he was stealing booze and was a shitty roommate. I was in college, senior. My roommate was a sophomore, but it was his first time living in a dorm. He'd been a pretty lousy roommate, constantly left the room a mess, left his stuff on my side of the room and on my bed, stole my alcohol, used my shit without my permission, never cleaned up my dishes after he used them, and a bunch of other stuff. I confronted him about all these issues on several occasions and got the resident advisor involved with the alcohol stealing issue because at the time he was under 21. Things still continued anyways. He asked me if I was okay if his girl spent the night, which I said no. We were in the middle of a pandemic, plus that's especially weird if I was there. I also had to wake up every day at 8 for work, which he knew, and he would stay up until 2 a.m. playing video games some nights. Not to mention, he would set like 10 alarms in the morning with a bunch of different alarm tones. I hit a breaking point and decided to do something cruel. Every morning when I woke up, I'd observe his alarm pattern and how he'd respond. He had several alarms that he'd ignore, all with the same sound. He had a couple half-hour alarms that had a unique sound, also ignored. And then the final alarm had its own sound too. All of them were default iPhone sounds. So his brain had been trained to this alarm pattern for a while, I'd assumed. So I started step one of the punishment. Set up a sequence of alarms on my phone, identical to his sequence, but an hour early. He responded to my alarms the exact same way he'd respond to his own. I kept this up for a week, and his brain was eventually retrained to sleep through the double amount of alarms as before. Then, phase two kicked in. Random inconsistencies in my alarm pattern. Some days I'd play all the alarms, while the other days I'd only play one that his brain was trained to ignore. That way, his brain expects to sleep through like 20 alarms and only ever hears 11. He slept through his alarms at least four times in two weeks. Eventually, he finally changed his alarm pattern so he'd only have one alarm and he no longer had the energy to stay up until 2 a.m. I, 40 male, started to cheat on my wife, 38 female, but stopped halfway through. Do I still tell her? What? Ah! What? I want to know the reason why he stopped halfway through. Let's get into it. My wife and I have had a great relationship. I can't say I have any real complaints. We have been together for five years, married for two of those, and up until now, I would have said I would never stray. You're not making your case for you strong, buddy. I was away for work last week, and while I was in the hotel, a young woman, 21 female, sat next to me and began to flirt with me. Can I just say something about being on business trips, okay? I've been on a few in my life. I can see why the workforce 
really gra- why people gravitate towards that because you're surrounded by all these pretty people you have unlimited drinks like i can see why people cheat on each other because it's so tempting and it's right there and it's available to you not condemning i'm just saying when i went on a work trip and i was like what the fuck is going on here like all these people were hardcore flirting with each other and they're hella old i'm like you got kids like you're married like what are you doing i don't know what it is about work trips that does this to people anyway i have to admit it was a real ego boost to be flirted by someone so young I started to get that middle-aged dad bod and have been feeling like I'm losing my looks a bit. After a bit of talking, the woman invited herself back up to my hotel room. She doesn't invite herself up, okay? You invited her. Let's not get it twisted. For me, it was all about the thrill of being desired by someone other than my wife. Why? Why? Why do you want to be desired by someone else? Isn't marriage about being desired by your spouse? Like that's all that matters. Why do you care about someone else wants you or not? The person who wants you the most has you. Isn't that what matters? Especially by a very young woman. See the keyword young. I don't know what it is. Men love the validation. Old men love the validation of younger, prettier women. I was slightly junk and I figured I'll probably never get the opportunity to sleep with a 21 year old again. Disgusting! You're 40! Ew! But the thrill wore off very quickly as I realized that I wasn't enjoying myself. This girl was not good in bed. That's your reason? Oh my god. You're digging your grave deeper and deeper as I continue reading this. She basically just laid there and starfished. Sometimes she would pull herself into what she thought was a sexy pose, but that was it. She didn't seem interested in me at all. I might as well have been a human dildo because she seemed more interested in herself and how sexy she thought she was. Sleeping with my wife has always been amazing. When I'm with my wife, she's all over me, talking to me, and telling me how hot I am, grabbing me, touching me, getting on top, and so on. I feel like the hottest guy in the world when I'm in bed with my wife. With this girl, I felt like I could just leave the room and she might not even notice, let alone care. She seemed like she just wanted the ego boost of a guy finding her attractive. Me kettle. I couldn't stay aroused and I stopped about 10 minutes into it and asked her to leave, which she did. I just took a shower and then called my wife to hear her voice. Now I'm back home and so far I haven't told my wife about any of it. There's a guilty part of me that says I should because she deserves to know. But another part of me says, why should I torpedo our happy marriage and cause her pain for something that I didn't even enjoy and will never do again? (laughs) What is this man saying? From what I can understand, you're saying because you got zero enjoyment out of it and you will never do it again. There's no point in telling your wife. Oh my God. All it did was prove to me that I want my wife more than anyone else. I want to do the right thing, but I generally don't know what the right thing to do is here. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let's not play games. I know that I will never ever stray again. Should I tell her or keep it to myself? Uh, I think you're just too chicken to tell her because you know the direction that this will take. And you didn't have to test the waters to know what you had because you already had it great. And that's your fault for making a mistake. You never know. Your wife might, might, the slim chance that it might, she might be open to talking about it and forgiving you. But she deserves to know. It's not fair because she has to hear it from your mouth because if it comes wrong, you're saying she'll never find out. You don't know that. It could come back and bite you in the ass. And when she finds out from someone else, you have zero chance of survival. I have been accused of baby trapping my fiance so many times. Sure, it was an accident. Are you sure you didn't purposely skip your birth control? And then when they learn that I wasn't on birth control, they're like, that's suspicious. What they don't know when I don't tell them is that I was having issues with my birth control for like a year before I got pregnant. And I had more than one pregnancy as a result of these issues. I was put on birth control as soon as my period started because I was having 17 day long periods and I'm anemic. And it was working fine. We upped my dosage a few times. And then when I was 18 is when all the problems started. And then I went through this really fun five month long period. So my doctor was like, we should switch a birth control method. See if that works. We went with the ring and I immediately had an allergic reaction. And I was away at university when this happened. So I was not with my normal doctor. So this new doctor told me to stop taking anything for three months. Let my hormones regulate and see what happens. I was pregnant with my son before those three months were up. 